In this video, I'm gonna talk about the concept of finishing your sweeps. And the reason why this is a separate video is because this is a, a, an issue that so many people have in regards to sweeping. They get their sweep and they don't finish it and their opponent just gets right back up and it's like the sweep never even happened. And it's extremely frustrating. It's like, it's like you did all this work to basically plant your opponent's butt and possibly their back on the mat only for them to just bounce up like they're like a, a kangaroo, like bouncing off the ground and you never even got the sweep, all right? So we wanna focus on finishing the sweep and honestly, it, it's much simpler than a lot of people realize. The first thing is um, a simple drill, right? This is probably a drill that you've done in class and you had no idea why you're even doing it. That's a whole nother subject. There's so many people who do drills in class and they don't even know why they're doing them. I have a video, a shrimping video, where I talk about this, on how I believe a lot of people are doing the shrimping uh, inefficiently, and they don't even realize why they're doing the shrimping. This is the same thing, and it's this, it's this drill. So I'm gonna do this by myself here, where I'm here like this. It's this one. I'm sure many of you have possibly done this drill here. Whether it's in class, or it's you know by yourself, because you're doing a jiu-jitsu workout or whatever, or you might have done it this way where you're doing less of a rock. Essentially what you're doing is you're curling your shin underneath your other leg, basically like you're kind of like about to sit like crisscross applesauce. This foot plants, you come forward with your chest and you drive your hips forward. Now that is one of the most useful drills in jiu-jitsu in my opinion. And it's extremely sad that lots of people have no idea why they're even doing it. They just do it because they think they're warming up and they think they're doing a dynamic movement that's going to help them with, um, you know, help them with better movement in their jiu-jitsu, I mean, which is true, but in reality, it's an actual technique. And this is where it, it comes in, right? One example is, let's say I was here and I was doing the basic um, hammer sweep. So Russ is standing up. I have blocking a limb, blocking a limb, pressure on his hip, which is going to help me make him overcommit. All right, watch the videos where I talk about the concepts the major concepts of a sweep, right? So right now I'm doing concept number one, which is blocking the limbs, and then I'm gonna do concept number two, which is make them overcommit. So I'm gonna make him overcommit. But what happens lots of times is, boom, I make him overcommit, the person has no idea how to get up, he gets back up, and it's like the sweep never even happened. But if we just add that simple drill in, you're gonna be able to get up. So I'm here, right? I block his limbs, so I'm blocking two limbs, I make him overcommit here, and then from here, I do the drill. I just do the rocking drill, okay? Now notice what I did was, is, ah, we'll turn this way. Here, what I did was, while I was here, for me, it's more comfortable to curl this leg in during this sweep. The reason being is because as I'm pushing in, if I try to curl my right leg in, it might feel a little awkward for me, you know? I mean, I, I could still do it properly, but for some people it might feel awkward. I don't care what side you do it on, but you need to curl one leg in. The other thing too is as I'm doing this, I need to realize that there's a point where he's falling, right? So at this point, he can't get back. He can't, he can't basically just get back right up. He has to hit the ground first, right? So there is a point where he's overcommitted. So when we go back, right? Since I know he's overcommitted, I can freely let go of my feet. I don't have to keep pushing him anymore. So now I know he's falling, I curl my leg in and then I get up. So we're doing the drill that we do in class. If you have never done this drill in class and you do jujitsu warm-ups, maybe ask your instructor about it, okay? Ask your instructor about this drill and if they know about it and they can give you some pointers. You can also find this in the solo drill section where I show a demonstration of basically doing this. And if you need more detail on how to do this, just let me know and I can make a video showing more detail on how to properly do this particular drill. But this is one of the most under underrated drills in my opinion. So many people focus on shrimping, right? But they don't focus on this drill when it comes to finishing sweeps. And this is extremely important. Um, uh, let's say we're here, right? Another example, let's say it's inside my clothes guard. And then Russ goes to stand up. It's gonna be similar, right? I go to do the waiter sweep. It's gonna be similar where I still have to curl my legs in. But the difference is, is he's gonna be inside my legs. So I'm here like this, right? I turn here and then look, I'm still curling my legs. My legs are still making an S, and then I come up, here. So this whole like concept of curling your shin in is very useful, even this S drill. This drill is useful too. 
here, where we're basically just going like this. That's another useful drill in regards to finishing your sweeps as well. Um, another big problem that people have is they don't drive forward when they're finishing their sweeps, meaning like they get the sweep and they just kind of stay in one place. When in reality, lots of times when you're sweeping somebody, especially when it comes to like open guard type of sweeps, you, you might be kind of like pushing the person away from you. So when you're doing that, you have to drive forward on them. So in that way you can work to finish your sweeps. So if we use this um, as an example again, right? I'm coming here. I go for my sweep. If I just do the sit-up drill, but I don't drive forward, he can probably scoot back and then get back up, right? I don't want that to happen, right? So when I'm here and I go to do this, I have to continue my pressure on him. I have to continue pressuring into him so in that way I can finish my sweep on him. So when you're going to finish sweeps, work on curling your legs so you can get up and also work on driving forward. This applies mostly to sweeps where it's a little bit more loose. Uh, if there's a scenario where I'm gonna pretend that he has a gi on, all right, so we'll go over here. I'm gonna pretend that Russ has a gi on and I have like a spider guard type of situation. So I'm here like this, boom. I have spider guard and I go to sweep him this way. Boom, right? I still wanna continue driving forward on him. I'm gonna continue driving forward so then that way I can get my control. I don't wanna sweep him, have him land on his back, have him be too far away and be able to scramble back up to his feet. It's just not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be a good situation for me. I'm gonna waste my energy and waste my time. So we really wanna keep driving forward. When it comes to the sweeps that uh, you're closer, like closed guard type of sweeps, this stuff doesn't apply as much. And the reason for that is because you're already so connected to the person. If I do hip bumps, flower sweeps, um, scissor sweeps, and other type of sweeps, I'm already so close to my opponent to where none of this stuff should be necessary. I should be able to just put some pressure into them and then finish my sweep. A lot of this applies when it comes to um, basically open guard type sweeps. You know, another example, some people go for butterfly sweeps and they kick them too hard, right? So if I kick him too hard and he goes far away, then I might need to drive forward so I can stay on top. So I might be here like this, right? He's down on the ground and I go for a, a butterfly sweep on him, but I really kick, boom, if I kick him way far away and I don't continue driving towards that direction, then he's just gonna get up. But if we're here again, and I go for my butterfly sweep here, right? I turn, I go for my butterfly sweep, and I wanna come here, I wanna stay connected to him. I wanna keep driving forward so in that way I can keep my pressure. So work on these things for sure. Work on coming up on your shin, whether it's doing it this way, here, or it's coming up on your shin by doing the S turns. You're gonna need these in different types of situations. And also work on constantly pressuring your opponent. Pressure, 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 because lots of times that pressure is gonna make it very hard for them to come back up. These simple things will help you finish your sweeps. And it's usually, I find these are the number one reasons why people do not finish their sweeps. They, they get the sweep opportunity, person falls on their butt or falls on their back, and then they lose it because they don't do these things. And then another important thing that Russ was also mentioning to me, which I highly agree, is keeping your grips when you're doing certain sweeps. There's times where a person goes for a sweep and they think that they can just freely let go of everything and then they give the person the opportunity to get away. Um, an example is uh, the butterfly sweep that Russ was mentioning here. If I go to go for a butterfly sweep and it's so good, right, but I decide to let go of my underhook and I let go of my grips here, right, and I just let go of him, I'm gonna lose the opportunity even if I do wanna drive forward. So I wanna make sure I keep a nice tight connection with them and I keep my grip. So when we're here again, right, and I have my butterfly position, I go for my sweep. Now when he goes to run away, he can't because I kept my grips. It helps me keep that pressure. Um, also, there's times where, well, let's say we go back to that basic sweep here, right? If we go back to the single sweep where I'm coming here and I basically go for my sweep well, if I keep his leg, when he goes to try to get away, it's easier for me to control him. 
right? So that time I kept his leg as well. So there's gonna be many, many, many times where you should always keep your grips when you're going to finish the sweeps. There are exceptions to the rule where sometimes keeping the grip um, will mess you up, but it's extremely rare, right? So focus on getting up properly, focus on putting pressure into your opponent, and also focus on keeping the proper grips to where you can still keep them connected and they can't just freely have the opportunity to get away. So definitely work on these things. If you have any questions or comments, post below. Peace.